Hi, today we're looking at section 6-4, Solving Special Systems. So take something out to write with, and at any time pause the video to take notes, and then always complete the check it out problems at the end of each of the examples. So our learning targets today, the first one is I can solve systems of linear equations in two variables. We have been doing this already, either graphing, substitution, or elimination. So we're going to continue doing this, but we're going to also classify systems of linear equations and determine the number of solutions. So remember back when we know when two lines intersect at a point, we have exactly one solution. So any systems with at least one solution are called consistent. When two lines in a system do not intersect, we know they're parallel lines, but they don't intersect which means there are no ordered pairs that satisfy, so there's no solution to that. So a system that has no solutions is called an inconsistent system. So a summarized system with solutions is consistent, and a system with no solutions is inconsistent. So we're going to solve this, solve this system of equations, as we have been doing, and then see what we end up with for our solution. Solving our system by substitution, we see that y equals this. We take x minus 4, substitute in for the y in the second e equation. Substitute here to get negative x plus the quantity x minus 4 equals 3. Removing the parentheses, we get negative x plus x minus 4 equals 3. Our x is negative x plus x goes to 0, so we're left with negative 4 equals 3. And that is a false, um, that's false, so therefore, there's no solution. Those are, should be three dots, therefore no solution here. We end up with a false equation. This is your check it out. Um, again, we can do by substitution. We can substitute this value into this for this y and solve. Or we could do elimination also. Either one would work. So now if two linear equations in a system have the same graph, the lines are coincident lines, or the same lines. There are infinitely many solutions, so if they're the same lines, there will be infinitely many solutions. Any ordered pair will satisfy that, because they are the, every point on the line will be a solution for both of the equations. So here, let's solve this system, and again, as we've been doing, substitution is a great way to do this. We have y equals this, we can substitute it in to that y there and solve and see what we end up with. So substitution allows us to take this value for y, put it in here, so here is our y value. So we get 3x minus y, which is 3x plus 2, plus 2 equals 0, so that's our revised second equation. Distributing the negative to everything in parentheses, we get 3x minus 3x minus 2 plus 2 equals 0. Simplifying this side, we end up with a true equation, 0 equals 0, <clears throat> and that is true. So therefore, we have infinitely many solutions. And again, you need infinitely there, infinitely many solutions. It's going to be your solutions for that. And here's your check it out. Again, it's set up very nicely for substitution. This is a summary of what we're looking at as far as classifying our systems. If we have a consistent and, depend, and independent, that means there's exactly one solution, meaning that if we put them in slope-intercept form, they have different slopes, and they intersect just at one point. Therefore, we have one solution. When we're talking about consistent and dependent, that's what we just looked at, that has infinitely many solutions, meaning they're the same lines. They're co Coincident lines, same slope, same y-intercept. If you were to graph it, the lines would be on top of each other. And then our inconsistent classifications, meaning there is no solutions. Same slope, different y-intercepts, parallel lines. They will never intersect. So those are the way we can gra or we can classify systems of linear equations. Make sure you have this in your notes. So here we want, <coughs> excuse me, we want to classify these three systems. The first one. You have x plus y equals 5, and 4 plus y equals a negative x. So for a, uh, write both of the equations in slope-intercept form, meaning solve them for y. 
So our first equation, we get y equals negative x plus 5. And our second equation, y equals negative x minus 4. Notice our slopes are both negative 1. So therefore, they have the same slope, different y-intercept. So they're going to be parallel lines and no solution. So let's take a look at the second one for b. Again, let's go ahead and solve each of those for y, or write them in slope-intercept form, and compare. So solving our first equation for y, we divide everything by 3, all the terms by 3, leaving us with y equals 1 third x plus 1. Our second equation, we just add 1 third x to both sides, so y equals 1 third x plus 1. Same slope, same y-intercept, therefore they're the same line, so there's infinitely many solutions. So forgot to use, um, so first we're going back to A. A would be classified as inconsistent because there's no solutions. B with infinitely many solutions would be consistent and dependent. And now let's look at our last example for C to classify this system. Those are both, well, one's already in slope intercept. Nope, neither of them are. Let's put them in slope intercept. So for C, to put them in slope intercept form, we had to distribute the 4 to every term in that parentheses there, leaving us with y equals 4x plus 4. And the second equation, add 3 to both sides, so y equals x plus 3. Here are two equations, different slopes, different y-intercepts, so they have exactly one solution, making it consistent, the system consistent and independent. Now it's your turn to classify these systems. Again, so you're looking, put them in slope-intercept form, compare the slopes, and compare the y-intercepts. Here's an example. Jared and David both started a savings account in January. If the pattern of savings in the table continues, when will the amount of Jar in Jared's account equal the amount in David's account? So for our story problem, we have to first define our variables. We'll let y equal the total savings and x equal the number of months that they can be saving for. So starting with Jared. Jared starts with $25, so that's y-intercept there and he's going up $5 per month, so his slope is 5 times number of months. David, on the other hand, he's starting with $40, and again, he's still saving $5 a month. So look at these two equations. They have a different y-intercept. The numbers here, 25 and 40, are different, but the slopes are the same, so therefore these lines are parallel lines, and they will never intersect. So they will never have the same, they'll never be equal to each other. Jared and David's account will never intersect. So yes, uh, now it's your turn. You have a story problem again to do. So find, write out two equations, put them in slope-intercept form, and then compare the slopes and the y-intercept. So this, looking at what we did today, we were determining how many solutions are going to be from a system. We still solve our system of equations using either substitution or elimination, or if you want to, you can do graphing. But then compare the slopes and the y-intercepts to see how they are. A linear system of equations will have exactly one solution, or no solution, or infinitely many. It'll have one of those three. Bring any questions you have to class, and thanks.